Hello and welcome back. So today we're going to be reading the seventh chapter of the Ten Tremendous Tales, Tom Gates. Um, if you want to read the previous ones, I've already posted them, so you can have a look at those. And um, they so till now I've posted the first one, second one, the third and fourth are combined since the fourth one is very short. And then I posted the fifth one and sixth one. Um, chapter and um, if you want to know the winner of the Crayola challenge go to the first one if you, if um, you don't have that much time I can tell you now so the winner is Daisy who is eight years old and lives in Peterborough so there's some one ups but you can go back to the first um, one for that but either way the winner is Daisy who lives who's eight years old in Peterborough and um, any other things that is that um, I will also be reading Treehouse books and also Tom Gates, um, more Tom Gates. So let's go on to the seventh tremendous tale. And I'll also be reading the eighth one today. So eighth and seventh. Okay, let's start. Number seven, Celebrity Sightings. There's a rumor going around, going around school that the famous actors Sasha, Sacha, Tosse and Rod Stable have been seen in Oakfield Town. They star in the really popular spy fil films. The Spy at Night, Don't Spy on Me, The Spy Who Didn't Like Me, my favourite, Why Spy. The spy books are really good too. Derek and I are waiting to go into school when Marcus comes running over like he's got something really important to say. Hey, 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 guess what happened to me, he shouted. He shouts, sorry, then doesn't wait for us to answer. I saw Satchel Tosse and Rod, set and Rod Table. Don't you mean Rod Stable? I correct him, but he ignores me. They were in the town library. I was t taking some books back and I saw them. And they smiled at me, he tells us. And is almost jumping up and down. More of our friends hear Marcus and want to know what's going on. Did you see Satcha Tosse in, was in the library? Are you sure? Why would they be in there, Amy wonders. It's a very good question. I didn't ask them. I was too busy being excited and smiling, Marcus says. Maybe they're getting books out of the library or taking some back, solid whispers. Seriously, they're film stars. Why would they be in the library, I Amy mean, laughs? Maybe they could be a, f they could be making a film. Florence wonders. Did you see any cameras? I asked Marcus. No, but I wasn't looking for any. Are you sure it was them? It seems a bit odd that they're in the library, Derek adds. Marcus is getting a bit cross with us all asking questions. Yes, I did. See Sacha, Sacha Tosse and Rod Stable yesterday. I'm going back to the library after school today to see if they're making a film. A new spy film staring Sacha Tosse and Rod Stable. Then a little kid walking past hears our conversation and joins in. Hey, I know who you're talking about. See, I told you all. I'm not making it up. Did you see them? Marcus wants to know. Yes, on the post at the bus stop. There's one for their new film, I Can't Wait, the little, the little kid tells us. This is not what Marcus wanted to hear. The bell for the start of school goes. The bell for the start of... The bell goes for the start of school and he stomps off, muttering to himself. In class, Mr. Fullerman hands out today's worksheet, which was all about writing st stories in diary style. Yes, good for me. Marcus already has his hand up and is desperate to let Mr. Fullerman and the rest of the class hear his news. Here he goes. Sir, 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 sir. Okay, Marcus, I can tell you you're keen to share something with us. Yes, sir, I saw the real statue Tosse in Rod Stable in, at the town library yesterday after school. Some could say, whoa, they're impressed. Others laugh. Mr. Fullerman smiles. I see how unusual to see famous people in Oakfield Town and in the library too. 
He sounds like he's not sure what happened. Then I put up my hand. Mr. Fullerman, you're forgetting that te- Teacup Tony and the sorcerers live in Oakfield Town at the leafy green old fox home. Well, Teacup Tony does and he was famous, I remind him. Not as famous as Sat Tosse and Sasha Tosse and Rod Stables, Marcus chips in, slightly annoyed. Pansy puts up her hand. Sir, there's someone on my street who's famous for spending the longest time in a bathtub of baked beans. Well, I take that back, Mr. Fullman laughs. Perhaps that what that's what you would that's what you could write in your diary story today, Pansy, he suggests. Marcus has already started his work. It's like no one believes I saw them, he says and glares in our direction. We do, Marcus. It's just funny that they were in the library, says Amy. And I agree. It's a bit like if they turned up in the local shop or playground. That would be unexpected, wouldn't it be, Marcus? I say to him, whatever. I'm going to write it all up in my diary story, Marcus mutters and gets busy. Amy starts says, I, and I'm left wondering what I can write about now. Then it comes to me in a flash. I write about the time Deli and I got stuck in the lift and how she wanted to meet a famous author but couldn't. Then how I saved the day with my spectacular sign and all the very important things I kept in my bag. Well, so I will get a lot of merits with this, I'm sure. And it's all true, of course. With my diary work all done, the bell goes for the end of the school day. Marcus leaves in a big hurry. I'm going back to the library, he tells us. If you see any if you see any mega film stars, Marcus, let us know, Amy calls after him. I will. I'm not making it up, he shouts back. Derek and I had planned to go had planned to head to the park and the shop on the way home. But now we're both curious to see if Marcus was making it all up. We might as well go. We could always get a bo- out a book, Derek suggests. Good point. Or we might be too busy hanging out with the famous people in Marcus, I joke. True, Derek laughs. On the way home, on the way, we walk past a poster at the bus stop for the new f- spy film and stop for a closer look. Nice poster. I've seen quite a few of those around town, Derek tells me. The spy who spied. Maybe that's how the rumour started in the first place, I wonder. The little kid saw the poster, Derek remembers. Marcus wasn't happy, I reminded him. I remind him, then take out my pocket money and check how much I have to spend. Not much, but it's better than nothing. After after a good thing, we settled down on, f- uh, on two fruit lollies. Then head off to the park. How long can you make your lolly last for, Derek wants to know. Not long. I've already taken a bite from the top and bottom, I say. Let's see if we can make it all... If, let's see if we can make it last all the way to the park, says Derek. Okay, and don't walk on any cracks in the pavement either, I suggest. It. This takes all our concentration. We do it, though, and finish our lollies at the same time. It's a lot easier to play in the park when you're not holding a lolly. What do you think Marcus is doing now, Derek asks me on the swing. Annoying someone or looking for famous people, I laugh. Or both, Derek adds. After the park, we head to the library, which is pretty quiet as normal. The library tells us that they're closing early today, so we won't have much time, but that's okay. No sign of Marcus, Derek I uh, says, or anyone else, I tell him. I find a spy book I wanted to get out, and don't grab the book on snakes. I have a quick read before the library, co- library closes. I'm going to show this to- book to Mark Clump. He is a pet snake, Dev reminds me. When we get home, I draw a picture of a snake and show it to Derek from my window. Derek does a picture of Mr. Fullerman, which makes me laugh. 
We have arranged to go and see the spy film at the weekend, and I can't wait. At least then I'll be able to tell Marcus we have seen Satchel Tosse and Rod Stable for real then. Might stop him from going on about them. At the school the next day, Marcus can't wait to show me and Amy this photo. I told you they were filming at the library. See, I don't know how you missed them, he tells us smugly. Nice, wow, smug. I don't know how either. To Marcus, love from Sasha Tosse and Rod Stable, XX. To be fair to Marcus, it's a really good picture and he does look very happy. I would be too. Derek and I still can't work out Derek and I still can't work out why we didn't see them. It's a total mystery. Marcus will remind me uh, us about this forever. I'd probably do the same. Number eight. Extra merits, hopefully. So I'll be reading this one as well because what happened is that this one was really short. This video was around 11 minutes. So then I'm going to be reading you number eight. Uh, A is kind of short as well. Homework meter. Happy. When Mr. Fullerman hands out homework, he tries to make it sound really exciting, as if it's the one thing we're all thrilled to do. I've got a big treat for you all. You're going to love this. I bet you can't wait to see what, what, what I've got for you today. Here's my thrilled face. This is what Mr. Fullman gave me for my homework this week. Homework for Class 5F. Here's some exciting homework that I know you'll enjoy. Cheery stars, don't fool me. Let's see that you all enjoy. Please use your imagination and let it run wild. This is your chance to write a story about anything you want to. I'm looking forward to reading your stories. One A4 page at least. Please, thank you. Mr. Fullerman. Shame. Mr. Fullerman added but added the bit about how long it's supposed to be and stop kids from doing things like this. Once upon a time, there was a giant who got really big, then died. The end. I've tried that before. Two. I have to get a few more meds for my work because then I can get a red badge. Mr. Fullerman has three colours of badge that he gives out if you've done something really well. Red badge if you've got if you if you've got lots of merits and you've been amazing. Blue badge is for anything spectacular in sports, activities, dancing, music, that kind of thing. Green badge for excellent environmental work. Recycling projects or anything like growing a huge sunflower. Not as easy as it sounds. I'm so close to getting a red badge, which is why this story is important. The trouble is I have been staring in my room. Uh, the trouble is I have been in my room staring at a blank page for ages. The blank page seems to be staring at me back. Still staring. I do a few doodles while I'm trying to think of a story to write. And then I get an idea. Delia sunglasses. Homework. Mr. Fullerman and anyone else who's reading my story, if these characters remind you of someone in real life, it's just a weird coincidence. The Sister Who Lost Her Smile. Smile by Tom Gates. There was once a really talented boy called Tim who lived with his mum and dad and his extremely grumpy sister, Telia, in the land of Field Oak. Their house was nice and large and quite fancy. Tim had everything up he wanted apart from a dog. Sad. Talia, Talia on the other hand, never seemed that cheerful, Talia. Mum and Dad said it was because she was a teenager, but I'm not so sure. One day, Talia was complaining about having to look after a wonderful brother, Tim, who was a joy to be around. Everyone said so. Talia's face was like thunder. Do I have to? I don't want to waste a minute of my precious time, she grumbled. Mum and Dad took her, shook her heads. How had they raised such a grumpy daughter? 
especially when the sun was such a delight. Then, while Telly was still frowning and a furious and furious, a big gust of wind swept in, they changed direction like this. And Telly's face froze. She got stuck with a grumpy mush face. At, the f at first, no one noticed as that was her normal expression. But after a few days, Talia realized something was up or down in, ca in the case of her mouth. These programs are hilarious, isn't it, Talia? Tim asked her while they were watching TV. Talia just stared blankly. I think my smile is gone. How can I get it back? You might have to wait for the wind to change. And that could take a while, Tim told her, because he was smart and he knew lots of things. Mum and Dad were worried Talia would be stuck like that forever. Oh no, no smile. What happens if the wind doesn't change, Dad said. We might never see Talia's happy, smiling face again, Mum replied dramatically. I don't think I've ever seen it, Tim pointed out. What are we going to do? Mum wondered. We could offer a par prize for anyone who can make Talia smile again, said Dad. Good idea, but it'll have to be something special. Otherwise, why bother? Otherwise, sorry, otherwise, why bother? Tim said, excuse me, I'm here, you know, snapped Talia. Mum and Dad set off to tell the whole off-field log town about Talia's missing smile. They put up posters and offered cash and some cake if anyone could help her get her smile back. Missing smile, cash and cake to, to anyone who can find it. This could be an impossible task, but luckily the people of Field Lobe Town were keen to help and get the cash and cake. Cash cake. So it wasn't long before a queue began to appear outside of the house. This looks promising, Mum told Talia. We should let them come in and see who will bring your smile, she added hopefully. Whatever, Talia grumbled. Tim pulled up a chair to see... To, to, Tim, Tim pulled up a chair as he was sure this was going to take a while. Talia just looked miserable. One by one, Dad let them see Talia. Some people really made an effort. There were clowns, slightly scary clowns. Hey Tim, pull my finger. Jugglers, dogs in costumes, flying dogs, hot dog, comedians telling jokes. What's it at the bottom of the sea and quivers? A nervous wreck. People who gurned and pulled funny faces. People wearing funny outfits. People doing silly dances. But nothing worked. Talia's mouth didn't move at all. Not one little bit. Who else is left? Mum asked. That's it. I'm afraid the funniest people in the whole of field look have failed to get Telly's smile back, Dad said sadly. The problem isn't me, it's them, Telly said miserably. I'm going to be stuck like this forever. The thought of Telly being even more grumpy wasn't great for anyone. Tim tried to look on the bright side, though. Oh, well, at least we get to keep the money and, the, and more importantly, the cake. We should eat some right now. Let's not waste any more time. Tim was so keen to have a slice of cake. He ran at speed and didn't see the small step until it was too late. Tim tripped and flew through the air, landing face first in the cake. At that exact moment, the wind changed, which might have been a coincidence. Talia's face began to quiver. Her mouth began to, to move. Her mouth moved from a big frown to a slight wobble. The sight of Tim's face in the cake made her smile. Then she began to laugh a lot. Ha 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 ha. Talia hadn't laughed like this in years. Mom and Dad were delighted. Oh, what a wonderful sight to see our daughter smiling and being happy again, Mum said. 
and that's all down to a brilliant son, son Tim. Dad added, even Delia had forgotten how much he enjoyed laughing at the misfortune of others. Tim, in this case, Dad helped to clean Tim up and then they all managed to have some cake, even if it was a bit squashed. I'm glad Telia found my trip funny, and that's why she's got a smile back, Tim said, as he was the best brother ever, who always put other people first. Because he was so good, Tim was allowed to use the money and buy the dog he, he'd always wanted. Telia wasn't happy about it at all. But then she was always grumpy about everything, so no change there then. Once the dog arrived, she didn't smile again for a while. It had nothing to do with the wind changing. Tim wasn't bothered at all because he had a dog and everyone lived happily ever after. The end. Oi! Almost. Now for Mr. Fulliman. I hope you're super impressed that I've written such a long story, which I think deserves a lot of merits. Space for merits. Eight delicious cakes. So nine nasty nibbles, we're going to be doing that later. Um, just saying that I hope you enjoy this. So nine nasty nibbles and um, the ten, ten tremendous minutes. So that's going to be the last one. So we're going to do those later. For now, I hope you enjoyed this. And we're going to do that later. Come back for that. See ya. Bye.